Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Experience and Innovation Officer, Carnival Corporation, John Paget, in discussion with Skift Travel Tech Editor, Sean O'Neill. What a presentation. So everyone in this room has given serious thought to personalization, but no one has uh, put it into practice as well in travel as the team at Carnival, uh, led by John Paget. Uh, John previously worked at Disney, where he helped put together the Magic Band, and he has a lot of experience in getting the Internet of Things and bringing it to life. Uh, so tell us about the medallion. I see it looks, you have the medallion there on you. Um, Absolutely. So let me first set some context about the cruise industry itself, because I came from theme parks originally, and uh, theme parks are these big cities that are all self-contained inside the berm. Well, a cruise ship is, think about it like the Venetian or the Bellagio, or the Madeleine Bay, just put them up in water, float them every day, move them to someplace else, and that's what a cruise ship is. You have the hotel, you have the food, the recreation, the casino, the entertainment, and what we w intended to do with the Ocean Medallion, which I am wearing, and it can pop out here, the Ocean Medallion here, is to connect every single guest in that entire ecosystem to actually deliver that personalized vacation experience that has no friction across every single interaction on that entire vacation experience. Well, everyone on the ship knows that you have, you have the hotels, you have the food and beverage, you have like maybe rides, attractions like the ro roller coasters. How do you manage to connect all that together with this? Well, um, you connect it with what we call an experience platform. And everyone has a platform these days, so everyone has a personalization <laughs> and everyone's doing platform. So let me just tell you a little bit about our platform. I call it the first experiential IoT. And what we do with these ships is we install about 7,000 sensors, 4,000 digital portals, we connect 2,000 crew member, 3,000 guests, and we connect them ubiquitously and seamlessly with the medallion. And that way, everyone's connected to the same ecosystem ubiquitously, 24 by 7 interacting. And so it allows all of these different vertical lines of businesses that you hear about in hospitality, whether it's uh, food or entertainment or recreation or the hotels, they're all vertically oriented. Mm -hmm. And the guest ultimately falls in between all those verticals with complications. So with the Ocean Medallion, we cut across all of that. So we call it our experience platform. Essentially, you know, we've said, you know, a cruise ship is just a 160,000 ton mobile device uh -huh. that floats. Right. And so if we could wrap that entire thing you put the with an operating system, that's exactly right. Yeah. Every, we just put the applications on top of it. So it, it doesn't matter whether it's a digital application, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's a guest crew interaction or a food inter, it, they're all just little mini apps or little interactions experiences that sit on this ubiquitous that makes uh, sense. invisible platform. So at a lot, of, a lot of these tech conferences, John, we hear about big data. Is this just another big data play? Yeah, if you flip this thing upside down, it's essentially a experience intelligence project masquerading as a guest experience enhancement. <laughs> um, but it's actually a fabulous guest experience enhancement. But I'm kind of anti uh, big data. Okay. So let me, let me, and that's kind of like crazy these days, especially if you're creating an IoT, let me explain the difference. Is that most companies are collecting all this big data and they call it big data and it goes to these data warehouses and it goes into these analysts, pools of analysts and, and data scientists and they do some analysis and they'll write a report and do a PowerPoint presentation and give it back to the operation and the operation may or may not make a change which then may or may not help a guest of the future. Our model, we wanted to break that down and we call it experience intelligence and what we're doing with experience intelligence is the data that is actually being created in that moment 
is actually plowed back into the guest experience in that same second. So real time. Real time. And that's the point of the IoT. You know, like innovation's cool, everyone's in the IoT, but what's the purpose? The purpose of the innovation and the purpose of the IoT is to push all that compute to the edge, take all that intelligence and put it back into that same interaction that's generating that intelligence. We, we actually create over six billion data points a six, week per ship. Six billion we, a week. Just like Stephanie said, we're not even close to harnessing all of it, but we've actually cracked the code on moving intelligence back in to fuel the guest interaction in real time on right. a ship anywhere in the world. It's incredible. So you mentioned Stephanie, so the uh, Chief Commercial Officer for Marriott was on stage and while she was talking you said, you know, she nailed it. The idea is you need to put customer first as a, f as a focus. But as a hard-bitten journalist, you know, I've heard people say customer first, you know, it reminds me of cubicle farms where they have those little inspirational posters and it says night sky and it says put the customer first. Like, what is a practical way an example that you're really doing this at Carnival? Well, the way we, I, I call it guest centricity. Okay. And when we started this particular project, uh, Medallion Class, um, we started from a clean slate. Okay. So four years ago, none of it existed. It was a concrete floor and we said, how do we rebuild a personalized uh, service delivery across every single touch point that has no friction? And to do that, unfortunately, we had to go deeper than I thought. <laughs> um, and so we ended up having to uh, go through the complete operating layer. So the hotel property management systems that were just talked about and everyone talks about in hotels had to trash that because that was a limiting factor. So, so let's, let's catch you on that. So classic hotel property management system makes the room the center of the system. Uh, so what would be wrong with that? Well, it's a, it's a big problem because if you're going horizontal ac across an entire uh, guest experience the and you're connecting guests at an individual level in real time, the guests can't be reconciled to a food and beverage system, to a hotel system, to an entertainment system, to a recreation system because then you actually have as many of you as there are of systems. Uh -huh. And so we flipped that on its side and said, look, we moved to a cloud-based microservices type environment that has every attribute of your vacation experience is associated with you as an individual. But you as the individual is the kind of ontic element that is always consistent. So there's always only one of you. Okay. You know, if you think about vacation experiences, it's kind of crazy. It's like if you wanted to watch a TV show, signing up for Comcast or AT&T U-verse every time you wanted to watch a TV show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the reason is, is because after every vacation experience in most reservation systems and property management systems, you aren't you anymore. You may be in a CRM system, but you're no longer in those systems. And so the way we've turned that is, is the guest is always consistent and you just associate a new itinerary uh, to that guest and they remain consistent across not just okay. this vacation experience but the future because all that intelligence you created the guest wants to be connected to you if you're proving to them you're magnifying their experience because of that intelligence but if you're just creating intelligence and collecting information and not fundamentally changing their experience for the uh, for the good uh -huh. then they ought to choose not to be connected to you because you're not benefiting them and that's what it's all about being guest centric so let's paint a picture let's say I'm walking on board uh, the cruise ship you know I'm from uh, Colorado or something what might be something that you could do well um, you know it's it's once you do it, it's, it becomes a game changer and it's about, taking, it's about taking every single interaction and ensuring, again, it's personalized and frictionless. And so when you arrive at one of our ports because you engaged with us pre-arrival, um, can you go back one slide? I'm actually going to show some specific examples so we're just not kind of explaining conceptually. But our, our guests will engage with us and they have a travel profile and so their passport and appropriate travel documents are all tied to you in your uh, ubiquitous profile. So when you arrive at a port, 
you're not, there's no reason to do anything because you've actually so, so got the medallion So if I get off the plane, ride. can someone at Carnival Corp identify me if I have the medallion at the airport and then direct me to a coach bus and then take me to the terminal? Or is that, or is, have you not gotten that far yet? Well, it's entirely, we could do that, but we don't actually at this point okay. staff the air side of the uh, airports. But to that point is, yes, your first touch point is a personalized experience okay. of where you're, where you're greeted. And then um, you go past through security because the security components are fundamental, but they're also associated with the same. You first step into the piazza of, a, of, a, of the cruise ship. People are welcoming you by name. You walk up to your stateroom and your stateroom door actually recognizes you. We don't even require a, you don't even have to touch, insert, or swipe because the door opens for you about three or four right. feet away. There's a little uh, door portal that recognizes your, you as an individual, celebrates your birthday or anniversary. That's fantastic. Uh, recognize your loyalty level. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the stateroom and the TV's already recognizes your profile. So actually everything is centered It follows on you around. You. It's like this little bubble. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a very clear explanation of the experience intelligence. So you have a lot of, let's say you wanted to put a roller coaster on one of the ships that has medallions. I know that's not currently, but purely hypothetical. And you wanted to know whether, you know, what demographic is riding it, what times of day it's working. Do you have the business intelligence tools now to take advantage of those data points? Or? Absolutely. I can tell you, I could walk off this stage, I could tell you what individual is sitting in what chair at the International Cafe on the Royal Princess in Vancouver mm -hmm. right now, right. in real time. Mm -hmm. And if they walk away, I'll tell you they won't move around it's because everyone is fully connected across the entire ecosystem. We actually have four ships mm -hmm. on our platform now. We have. I thought it was only three ships. No, I, well, actually, I just think I announced the fourth. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so that's so, news here at the Tech Forum and a yeah. fourth ship. Okay. So the official launch date of the Crown Princess, which is currently uh, up in the British Isles, is uh, July 24th. But actually, as of this week, all guests on the Crown Princess are using the, the Ocean Medallion and, and loving it. Uh, we have a ship up in uh, Alaska, the Royal. We have the Caribbean Princess um, in the Caribbean. And then we have the Regal Princess up in the Baltics. And they're all on the same platform. All guests are connected, all synchronized to the cloud, all generating and, and, uh, these and, and so one thing that you said to your CEO and you have said that it's very important that this is optional. People don't have to actually do this. So what has been the opt-in rate? Yeah, so that's probably the biggest surprise the most, not me, because okay. uh, I had confidence in it. But the uh, opt-in rate is 99, I like to say 99.5, because wow. no one believes that it's really 99.93. Wow. Uh, but the opt-in rate is uh, great, because mm. the Ocean Medallion s substantially and significantly maximizes the guest experience. Okay. If it was just a replacement for a key card and you made it cool to get into a stateroom mm -hmm. and you know then it's like ah should I use a card or should I use a medallion but when I, I literally have the vacation just unfolding in front of me like I'm at my grandmother's house yeah. Everyone's into that. Right. Um, I'll, I'll actually read, though. I'll, I'll read uh, online, and people say, "Well, I didn't use it all that much." And I'm like, "Well, you got on the ship. You <laughs> ate food ac across the entire seven days. Uh, everyone was interacting with you. You made payments, so you used it the whole time, and you didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. It was part of the ambiance." Yeah. And, and, sometimes and people think that the digital experience side, because we have a portfolio of digital uh, experiences, what I call them, versus mobile apps that have, that guests are, can elect to use, mm -hmm. but they're not fundamental. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that are uh, more optional mm -hmm. in our model. So uh, you rolled this out, you announced it at uh, Consumer Electronics Show in January 2017. At that time, Carnival Corp had implied a sort of rollout for the number of ships. It was more ambitious than what you've done. Has anything gone wrong in terms of the rollout? Or? Well, um, when, uh, I think you hinted at it a little bit more ambitious. In anything, step function innovation, it's always a little bit more time mm -hmm. and it's always a little bit more money. <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast because once you put something in the real world, it's just the case. And that's the real test of successful innovation right. is that uh, you can, you can, you know, you can iterate all you want. You can build the story, uh, you know, I, some of the stuff that we've done in the past, both are, we have an innovation center in Miami that's a duplicate of the ship. Uh, back in Disney days, I had the sound stage, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter how much you 
simulate the real world is still the real world. And so when you decide to launch into the real world, you got to take a deep breath, make sure everyone's aligned, make sure the strategy, you're committed to that strategy and see what happens. And right. it takes about, it takes about eight months, well, it takes about six months to a year once something gets into the real world to work out the kinks. Mm -hmm. and it took us about eight months. Mm -hmm. And now we're just kind of duplicating ships and uh, rolling them out. Cool. Getting, getting, I don't want to say easy, but it's certainly a lot less stressful. That's fantastic. Well, so my colleagues at Skift Research have a question for you, which is that a lot of uh, this effort that you're describing of customer experience, it cuts across so many departments and teams. It's a cross-functional thing. How did you create the organizational change to make that happen? Well, uh, it's a great question because Everyone likes to talk tech. <laughs> Everyone likes to talk innovation and isn't it hard? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not easy, but it's not nearly as hard as people. Right. People are much more difficult and it's ultimately, you know, in the, the category is called change management. Yeah. I like to call it change leadership because you have to lead people to, the, you know, in the change of the business model. And if you're cutting across all of these models that are vertically, that have been comfortable, all of which are doing great upon themselves. Mm -hmm. But when you collapse that focus onto the guest experience itself and do everything you possibly can do to make that guest experience fabulous, then, you know, that changes a lot of behaviors. I like to say that um, everyone loves change as long as it's your change, not my change. <laughs> and when you're uh, changing horizontally, you ultimately impact everyone. So to me, the biggest challenge is always the change leadership of people and staying consistent with your vision, cons uh, staying consistent with your mission and working through those tough times on behalf of the guests. Okay. Is there... Uh how do you value a decision like this? You could have gone in piecemeal, you went in all in. How did you make that decision? That's one of the most frequent questions I receive because okay. it's so challenging for organizations uh, in so many different dimensions. Large enterprises that have the funding to really do something step function is very tough because different departments have to totally align, which is impossible, to then get something off the ground. Or if you deal with kind of a more, uh, a, a smaller kind of, you know, a startup type, uh, where there's complete flexibility to do great work, but you don't really have the heavy duty funding it takes to make that change, it's very interesting. And so we like, I like to kind of cross those. And uh, we spend our time when early in the game to be very clear on what we're accomplishing, very clear on the goal. Uh, articulate, stay consistent with the articulation, define that vision, and what I do is I paint that vision in reality. We build a replica of what the end goal is. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, it allows people, once you, once you participate in something, it's impossible to not know you participated in it and forget. Whereas if you read a PowerPoint deck, you can say, yeah, I don't really remember that. <laughs> uh, and so it's galvanizing around that vision. And our vision is all based on the belief that an end-to-end -end guest experience that focuses on true, true individual personalization because uh, personalization has been around for hundreds of years. It's just been only for the elite. Um, and you really, truly eliminate friction, just not shift friction to some other method sure. that you increase value of the experience for the guest and that increases value to the shareholders. So the valuation we did was holistic uh, of a complete solution that we didn't value the individual pieces and parts. And then the ultimate measurement of it will be the whole. Uh -huh. And that's not typical in large enterprises because each uh, department or each functional area owns a piece. Thus, you do your justifications piece by piece by piece. And that's not how the guest experiences your product. And it's not how the guest really experiences the world. Do you have all the tech that you need or are you, and other business intelligence tools that you could use in order to help enhance your system? Boy, it depends on the day. Some days I have all the tech I need, um, <laughs> but uh, there's always, you could use uh, more. I think the, uh, you know, people, a lot of people are talking about AI. We use AI on our real-time recommendations back to our guests. But it's interesting is you have to be really confident that you're intelligent before you're applying that intelligence. 
And I think that people think that you go buy some AI package, go ahead and install it into your ecosystem, and all of a sudden everything's better. And I don't think it in practical it's a reality is the it quality works of the like data, that. or it's the question no, of it's mm -hmm. it's uh, a machine has to learn okay. to then uh, advance the next step mm -hmm. of really applying that artificial intelligence and uh, and taking you know making things more systematic to do what we're focused on now at scale every day, we have to be using the best AI tools that exist. Um, and we'll have to keep on because human intervention just can't scale to that level of intelligence. But I think all, you know, it's just one of those things that technology to me is just the means to the end. The, the goal in the, is the mission around the guest. If the technology exists, we'll go source it. If we need to invent it, we'll invent it. It really doesn't matter. People it's don't just, tend to you know, think of like a carnival as a, a, a technology company. So it was bold that you guys sort of did built so much of it in house. House. Right. Like, you know, you, and, and so your advice to other people in the audience who may be from other sectors outside of Cruise is feel confident you can build or? I think that, I think that uh, it really depends on the organization. It depends on your skill set. Um, we approach, our fundamental approach is business, tech, ops, and creative. And so we think about it on all dimensions on anything that we're doing. Um, I don't think that it's reasonable to think that anyone can build. Uh -huh. um, I think if you are going to build, you have to have enough experience in that because we've built our hardware, we've built our wearable device, we did all, you know, the vast majority of our, of our software. And we had to do it because that's what it took to deliver the goal. Uh -huh. But if those tools were on the shelf, and those tools would have delivered the goal, it would have been much easier to go get them off the shelf. But the true reality is most things off the shelf aren't off the shelf. Okay. Uh, and so my caution is do your due diligence, understand your mission, understand your vision, and don't fool yourself that, uh, that off the shelf is easier because it can be a complete waste of money. Mm -hmm. Or it may be easier. And building it may be the most effective way to do it. Or it could be a rabbit hole that you can't get out of once you get into. And so you just have to know what you're dealing with and keep all options on the table. Mm -hmm. And I think that any time you get married to any one uh, specific, you know, technology or approach or in-source and outsource, it limits your thinking as it relates to achieving your vision. So we have a question from the audience about uh, how do you think about GDPR? You said the European Union has these privacy regulations. Like, how has that impacted the data that you collect? I think it's fabulous because I think that all, if you're truly guest-centric, then guests should be in control of understanding what you're doing with their intelligence. I'm, yeah. I'm the ultimate guest-centric person. The, the challenge is, is if you're not prepared with for it and you haven't architected for it, it can be extremely difficult. So the natural reaction is, is you can't use personal information in enabling a guest experience. And that's not what the guest wants. The guest wants you to be equipped to use that information to power that personalized experience and give them the ability under those regulations, if requested, to provide what you're using that information. And most important to me is the ability to forget me if I want you to forget. You have to be architected architected for that mm -hmm. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. That's very scary. Uh -huh. And the natural reaction, and it's very dangerous in the travel space, just is just yeah. to pull back and right. say, hey, we've talked to the legal team, we've right. talked to the, the privacy it. people, you can't do this anymore. Uh -huh. Well, that's not actually what the guest is asking. Mm -hmm. The guest, the guest is just asking control, you to solve those problems, mm -hmm. and give them control, and deliver the experience we want. So it really doesn't phase us at all because it was anticipated in our design. Okay. Uh, another question is about given the data that you have, did any behavioral ins if you've gotten any behavioral insights that have surprised you about how your guests behave? I think the biggest surprise is that. Um, and I think I mentioned this to you one time when we talked before, is that they're stereotyping any individual as tech or non-tech of, of any demographic mm -hmm. or age is completely wrong. Okay. Uh, because when we are in uh, Princess Cruises, which is the brand that the Medallion Class Experience is on uh, now and empowering with, within the Carnival Corporation, uh, we have nine different brands. The more senior guests are some of the most excited guests in the overall ecosystem and participating. Now, 
there are certain characteristics of certain guests that are less tolerant of the hassle. Let me tell you, if I took and said, hey, if I didn't give a, a, one of our guests, I think my medallion's here, if I didn't give them um, the medallion and say that you don't have to configure it, mm -hmm. you don't have to charge it, mm -hmm. you don't have to turn it on and off, mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything with it, you just have to have it, mm -hmm. everyone's all in. <laughs> but if I put a bunch of requirements associated with that and said, hey, you know, you have to download this, you have to configure this, your Bluetooth settings need to be this way, you make sure your phone's always charged, there's going to be a lot of people opting out because they like the experience they were having already. Uh -huh. So why in the heck would I interject this many hurdles and hassles into my experience to enjoy what I already enjoyed anyway. So my principle is that at first do no harm. And so if you want everyone to engage in a greater guest experience, make sure it has no criteria for participation, which in this case, that's why we give them the ocean medallion. And then we make everything else, all the other digital layers of our experience, uh, because we have the equivalent of Netflix. We have the equivalent of Waze. We have the equivalent of Fine Friends. We have the equivalent of all those shore-based experiences on the ship now and available to all guests at no charge. But if I required them to do a bunch of things and said you have to do those mm -hmm. things, yeah, our participation no -go, would right? be much lower. Yeah. And if I said you have to have an ocean medallion, right. I bet you 20% would elect out just because just I told to, them they the had to. The matter, right? But no. we say no. no. If you don't want to have a card, it's all good. Cool. And uh, everyone well, jumps right in. It's an incredible success story. Thank you, John, for ta hey, talking pleasure. to us about it. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a good one. I'll fire you off the stage here.